Oh, yeah. I like ultralight backpacking, and I kind of want to find an expression of ultralight urban living. We happen to be in the catbird seat of the new technology gulch here in mid-market. That building right there is Twitter. That building over there is Uber, Square, Yammer is there, Dolby Sound is there, and in this immediate vicinity there are, I believe, 16 tech startups that have a valuation of a billion dollars within a half a mile of this spot right here. San Francisco's rents have gone up 40% in five years. You know, in order to build affordably in the city, you have to build densely, very densely. But the codes don't acknowledge that fact. Most codes are more an, an aggregation of scar tissue as opposed to a thoughtful uh, expression of the desire of the city. We were tired of paying rent in the mission. This is something where you can get a box and live in it. Zoning can be a huge pain in the ass, and part of this is us not having dealt with that. Another part of it is us just being risk-seeking and making a bet that enough people are pissed off, sufficiently pissed off about how unaffordable it is to live in such a great city that the rules we're breaking, we should have a good reason why we're breaking them and a feasible path to how we could change them and then, you know, kind of go from there. So I want to build a compelling reason for why people should change the laws. I came to this this area is no building restrictions whatsoever and that's really hard to find in this country you can do whatever you want I could live in this doghouse if I wanted to and that would be perfectly fine the only rule that I know about here is if you have a permanent residence on 10 acres or less you have to have a county approved septic or a county approved composting toilet yeah, you know, if you have a big city and everyone's just going out in their front yard and pooping, it could be a problem eventually. I don't know if the population's ever going to really grow out here because, you know, drilling a well is a crapshoot out here. There's no electricity on, on most of the ranch. You know, people kind of like to have something to, a place to plug in and then a place to turn on a faucet and have endless running water. But uh, that just doesn't happen out here. It's just a uh, rough land. Arizona, guys. We were in search of a dynamic way of life, so we had made frugality the dogma of our personal journey. We're done in this small car, and we are a family of five, so that means food, shelter, and then clothes, and all necessities. So that means we have to be really lean. So they stay in these shelters, college students, right? And they have to live there from October to May in the elements with no plumbing, with no electricity in this desert. We're out in 500 acres in North Scottsdale. And why do that? I mean, part of the idea is they'll learn about what's needed. Like what kind of shelter is actually necessary to sustain life? It's not worse than a motel room. We just speak the view. The place. That's a two person tent. In my opinion, it could be a four-person. But I think it's a two-person. We were thinking that since we are five, we are going to sleep horizontally. Yeah, I think that's the guy. Oh, no, that's the one. That's the one. That's our pull. Okay, you can pull right in. Here? Yeah, and it's electrified. So we can charge everything. Daddy, daddy. In Texas, it takes only 54 people to vote to become a town. That means people living here or people using this as their residence that they come back to and call home. We can actually incorporate and become our own town for the purpose of having our own police force, having our own building code, and set up our own rules and regulations about our businesses, our zoning. And this goes down another 10 or 12 feet. This is water, 65 degrees, with heavy bentonite clay in it. but. There's a couple things we can drop in to desilt it. We could actually make it clear water. And we could actually have fish down here growing. What's in there? Where? 
The, the, the bus. Oh, it's an RV. In an ideal world, every main house where you come to eat dinner is also where you open the trap door and you go down below. Because in Texas, this is not taxable as living square footage. New Mexico. This is New Mexico. Mexico, we've put aside uh, hundreds of acres to test nuclear bombs. So Mike went to the legislators and said like, hey, let us experiment with housing. And they actually gave us uh, two acres to set aside. So we're doing things that are not normally accepted by counties and permitting and all that. So we're just trying to do what works. This is the house that's designed to feed a family of four. There's more space dedicated to plants in this house than there is to living space. We did have a tilapia pond going here, trying to create protein, trying to create food for people, and this is all experimental. Usually it's just all living space, but Mike put plants even in the living space too. We're always experimenting, we're always trying to make it better. And that's, I guess, probably one of the hard things about dealing with permits and zones and codes, and they stay, stay in one place, and you all tend to change, so. Yeah. Yeah, it's hard for them to keep up with us because all the building permits and all that stuff, it's all antiquated thinking, you know, and they can't keep up with us. So yeah, you can just graze on your, your house. This house will feed you. This house will take care of you. I guess it's, our, it's up to us to kind of present it to them in a way they can understand. laboratory. Why is it called that? Because they're trying to study ideas for, for how you could make communities. Here we're more part of an urban experiment. We don't have to drive everywhere and, and so there's not that stress of getting in the car and you know try to go somewhere. Aha! There he is! I'm doing what are this. you doing? I have to do this. You have to do that? The American dream is, is a non lean alternative at this point. I've been talking about uh, what I call a lean alternative. Do you feel like people need to give up more in order to? Well, I, I don't call it giving up. I, I'm, I'm call, I tend to call it free, freeing up. Because the, the virtue of leanness eventually is worthiness, streamlining what life might be.